Uh, SpaceX is about 30 people. Um, and, and what we do internally at SpaceX is we do all of the design, uh, analysis, um, integration of hardware, testing, and then launch operations. Um, but a lot of the heavy manpower stuff, like welding together our primary structure, the heavy machining and so forth, that we outsource. So we'd be a much larger company if we did all of that internally. Th there's no silver bullet that I can point to as to why the, our vehicle is a lot cheaper. Um, we've really focused on um, reducing the cost across the board. Um, I mean, one thing, our overhead in a 30-person company is, um, you know, an order of magnitude less than it is in Lockheed or Boeing, uh, just, to, just for starters. So even if we did everything the same and built the same launch vehicle, we'd be considerably cheaper. Um, and then it, every decision we've made has been with consideration to simplicity. And the reason for simplicity is because that both improves the reliability as well as uh, uh, reduces your cost. Um, if you've got fewer components, that's fewer components to go wrong and fewer components to buy. Um, I think there's, there's a, I think a fairly significant innovation in our airframe, um, which is uh, uh, semi-pressure stabilized monocoque with variable skin thickness and a common bulkhead, if you know what that means. Uh, it's, I would need a diagram to explain it all. Uh, but the net result is that it's very cheap um, and uh, it's very mass efficient and I think easy to test and quite reliable. Um, our avionics system, I'll give you another example. Our avionics system, we use an ethernet on the vehicle to communicate. They may, that may not sound like a great innovation, but it is in launch vehicles. Um, all the other launch vehicles communicate in the vehicle by these uh, serial cables that run the entire length of the vehicle. And uh, so you've got these, these giant copper bundles as thick as your arm running up and down the vehicle. It makes it heavy, it makes it expensive, and there's just, so there's, there's things like that which uh, you, when you add them all up, it, it makes a huge difference. Vehicle is currently traveling uh, point two, uh, 27 meters per second at 0.2 kilometers above the pad. Power system is normal. First stage of propulsion is normal. Everything's not. Fairing separation confirmed. Got a clean fairing set. Vehicle has completed shutdown. had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that. 
uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive.
it, it's kind of amazing that this window of opportunity is open for life to go beyond Earth. And we just don't know how long that window is going to be open. But the thing that gets me the most fired up is that creating a self-sustaining civilization on Mars it would be the greatest adventure ever, ever in human history. It, it would be so exciting to wake up in the morning and think that that's, that's what's happening. We have lift off. The, uh, the goal of SpaceX is to try to advance rocket technology, and in particular to try to crack a problem that I think is vital for humanity to become a space-faring civilization, which is to have a, a, a rapidly and fully reusable rocket. What are the things that need to happen in order for the future to be an exciting and inspiring one? And I, I, really, I really think there's a fundamental difference if, if you sort of look into the future between a humanity that is, that is a space ring civilization that's out there exploring the stars on multiple planets. And I think that's really exciting. And compared with, with one where we are forever confined to Earth until it's an eventual extinction event.